just looking from the side, we're just going to rock and roll here. So, allowing the pelvis to tip forwards and then backwards. Tip forwards. And when you tip your pelvis backwards, you'll notice how you're going to clench your bottom a lot more easily. It's easier to pull your tummy in. When you tip your pelvis forwards and stick out your bottom, you don't want to do that too much because the vertebrae tend to sort of squeeze together a little bit. We want to find neutral. But just to say that when you tip your pelvis backwards, and that's easier to clench your bottom and pull your tummy in, I'm going to call that a scoop from now on, a pelvic scoop. So you know what that means. It's not the sticking out the bottom, it's the opposite. So we find the midway point between the two, and that's your neutral pelvis, keeping the knees soft. And we're just going to roll the shoulders back a few times, just to open up the chest and warm up through the shoulders. Swimming, but keep the body, the trunk of the body that includes the chest, as still as you can. It's a good job we're not doing the relaxing bit because the, uh, the car's going past outside and the sirens. And then just roll the shoulders back and down into position. You don't want to be too far back like that, just a nice little nip between the shoulder blades so that your chest feels open. Tummy muscles zipped up from your pubic bone up to your navel. Just sort of think about the pelvic floor muscles. That's at the base of your core. So I'm going to put that together with the breathing. So take a breath in through the nose. Don't let the shoulders come up as you do that. So inhale. And as you exhale, just pull up the pelvic floor muscles up towards your diaphragm. Hold and breathe in. And as you exhale, just slowly over those pelvic floor muscles. So my hands are irritating the pelvic floor. Breath in at the bottom. As you exhale, pull up the pelvic floor muscles. Hold. Inhale. Keep the shoulders relaxed. And as you exhale, slowly up. Do one more breath in the bottom. As you exhale, up comes the pelvic floor. Hold as you inhale. And exhale and slowly lower the pelvic floor. Just try to control. Just bring them up a tiny little bit those pelvic floor muscles. But they're going to stay like that just for a little bit, but not too much. And pulling the tummy about halfway. We probably let that go a little bit. Try and keep it in about halfway. Keep that lovely breath flowing. Let's breathe in and raise the arms to shoulder height. Breathe out. And take the arms slightly behind the body. So inhale, exhale. Keeping the shoulders down. So you don't want to bring the shoulders up at any point. Keep the body still. Don't let it rock. Inhale, exhale. Press the arms slightly behind to work your triceps. And we'll start to raise the arms and raise the heels. Keeping the knees soft. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. You don't have to lift very far. And keep the tummy muscles tight, just nice flowing moves. Inhale and exhale. Just one more. Inhale and exhale. And then we're just going to bend the knees into a chair squat and standing up tall. So the arms come in front. Notice how my knees stay in front of my, behind, sorry, definitely behind my toes. Because when you're in your chair squat, you want to feel the body weight going into your heels. So in order for that to happen, you have to imagine you've got a chair behind you and you're aiming your bottom towards the chair. Keep your tummy in, keep your pelvis in neutral. You don't want to stick out your bottom and aim it horizontally. It's got to be diagonally downwards. Inhale, let's start to add those heel lifts. Exhale. So here, the weight is in your heels. Here, the body weight is in the balls of your feet. And the pelvis is very steady. It's not rocking around and scooping and sticking out the bottom. Just keep it very stable. Tummy in. Shoulders. Think about your shoulders. Don't bring them forwards. We'll just do one more. So inhale to go down. And exhale to come up. And then replace your heels. And we're just going to do that pelvic scoop that I talked about earlier, where you tip your pelvis backwards. Just scoop all the way. And you feel your bottom tighten, keep your knees soft, bend them a little bit, and allow your body to just curl around, curve in your spine, even let your shoulders droop forwards. Rest your hands on your thighs, feel that lovely lower back stretch. Tummy in. While you're in this position, just flatten out your back. And then we're going to re scoop the pelvis, tipping it backwards. It feels like you're pushing forwards, which you are, but it's actually tipping your pelvis backwards. 
And in this position, roll your shoulders back and down. Down your spine, away from your ears, tummy in. And we're gonna roll up, keeping your chin to your chest. Roll up through the spine, the chin comes last. Find your neutral again, halfway between the scoop and the sticking out your bottom. Lovely. Okay, we're gonna do some balancing now. So you're in your Pilates position, standing tall. Just gonna raise the alternate knees in front. Now when you do this, the tendency is because it's this scary to lift one foot off the floor. People tend to try and get close to the floor so they sink into their hip and maybe even bend the knee. You want to do the opposite. Rise out of the hip, keep your tummy in, and the leg is standing up. Try not to lock the knee. So even when you're rising out of your hip, don't lock the knee. So you try to come tall the hip, but keep a little bit of softness in the knee. Think about your foot as well, make sure it's not all clenched, you don't get cramped. So keep your feet nice and relaxed. Okay, so good on down. So next time you raise, you need to bring the arms in front of both arms, just the shoulder height, like palms next to each other. Inhale to raise. Exhale to lower. Keep your tummy tight. And your pelvis is steady. Make sure you don't take tension to your shoulders. You don't want to be doing this as you go. Movement at the waist. Makes the last one. 
holding the tummy more. If you can, use your bottom more because that supports your core. And maybe don't lift the heels. So you can just, just keep the heels on the floor. But remember to release the glutes as the arm comes down. Soften the knees, release the glutes. Makes the last one. And separate the heels. And you probably felt not only your bottom, but the backs of your legs working. So we're going to stretch out the backs of the legs and make this into a Pilates exercise. So if you come to the front of your mat and imagine you have tram lines behind you, one for each foot, they're about hip width apart. And we imagine these tram, tram lines and they'll help you stay in alignment. So stepping back with the right leg, making sure the foot stays on the tram line. So you don't need toe to turn outwards. And try and get your heel down at the back. As you step back, you lean forwards a little bit, not too much, because you want a nice straight line going up from that diagonal leg, up your spine, and then up the back of your head. And then as you step in, come up right, keep your shoulders down, keep the knees soft, keep the tummy in. So just lean forwards a little bit, not too much. Feel that stretch, make sure your foot is on the track line, pointing forwards, and then bring it back. We're going to add arms. So we're going to try and raise the arms, but keep the shoulders down. Bend the elbows, that's fine. Just flowing the move a little bit more. So a little faster, but still nice and easy. Staying at the same pace, keeping the tummy in, keeping the shoulders down. Inhale, step back, exhale, step forwards. The front knee is bent as you step back. So you can raise the arms higher as long as the shoulders are. Next time you step back with your right leg, just hold that. And we're going to actually come into a balance now. So we're going to take the arms out wide and lift the right leg slightly off the floor, keeping your left knee bent. Keep leaning forwards and try and squeeze your bottom on the right. Hold that balance, breathe. And then we're going to bring the arms back up and the heel down, still leaning forwards. And then step in, bring yourself up right. Need a stretch? Just take a stretch. It's fine to do that. We'll do the same on the other side. So hold, make sure your shoulders are down, tummy in. And then just keeping your front knee bent, pick up the back leg, keep it straight, not too high. Squeeze your bottom, still leaning forwards, arms wide, shoulders back, tummy in and breathe. And then replacing that heel and then stepping in and coming upright. And again, if you need to stretch, Always fine to stretch, keeping the tummy in. You can even go all the way down if you like. And rolling back up. Chin comes last because that's the last part of your spine. And we're just going to stay with these tram lines. And we're going to step back, this time keeping the chest up. And you can see that my heels lifted at the back. And both knees are bent. Stepping forwards, stepping back with the left. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. As I step back, I'm going to just Push forward through my left hip, just scoop the pelvis a little bit so you feel the stretch. Change legs. So push forward, scoop the pelvis, feel that stretch in the right hip. Staying on the tram lines, I'm going to start to add arms. So the arms, I'm hoping you've got enough room, they just come out wide like that. Just to shoulder height and then back by your side. Inhale, step back. Exhale, step forwards. Keeping the shoulders down. Keeping your chest up so we're not leaning forwards this time. And thinking about the front knee. It should be behind the toes as you step back. Keep the tummy in. I just want to show you from the front. The pelvis needs to stay symmetrical. If you don't want to do like this, lifting one hip bone higher than the other. Imagine if someone's giving you a gentle push through your chest and you've travelled backwards horizontally but your chest, the trunk of your body, is still upright. I'm just going to try and go a little further each time, maybe even towards the floor. Some of you might be able to get down and feel okay that you still feel comfortable and in control through the core, through the tummy. If that's too far, then that's absolutely fine. Just stay within your range. You might want to make it really little like this. You might have straighter arms, or you might choose to bend them a little bit. It's fine. So next time you step back with your right leg, just hold it here. And we're going to raise the right arm. I'm 
stretch over, hold that position, just hold that position. And then bring it back, and then bring it back. the right arm as well and just tilt over to the left. Now, this is a hard position to hold. I don't want you to swing your hips out, just keep your hips centered, tummy in, yeah, just tilt from the waist, keep your shoulders relaxed and breathe. Then use your tummy muscles to bring back up to center. Then step in with your right leg, bring your right leg forward. We'll do the same with the left leg. So stepping back with the left, just do that little pelvic scoop that I talked about. Raise your left arm. Try and keep your pelvis still. Tilt. So we're just tilting over to the right, holding the pelvis still, not swinging the hips out. Hold and breathe and keep the shoulders relaxed. Tummy muscles tight, bring them back up. Breath in as you breathe out. Step in, lovely. And just take a little breather and a stretch if you need it. And rolling up through the vertebra. Okay, everybody. It's time to bring us down to the floor now. So, we're just going to come to the back of the mat. And again, think about the tram lines. We're going to keep the shoulders down, make sure the pelvis is in neutral, the tummy is tight. And we're going to raise the arms up without the shoulders coming up. Keep the knees soft. Keep that pelvis in neutral, or you can do that little scoop, if you like. A breath in. And as you breathe out, we go chin to chest, and we're rolling that spine up. As you go down, try and keep your shoulders away from your ears. Don't let your shoulders slouch forward. Knees are bent slightly, not too much. And take yourself down. Walk your hands forward about halfway. Place your hands flat on the mat. Head between your hands, between your arms, sorry. And roll your shoulders away from your ears. Just feel that stretch at the back of your legs. Now soften your knees, keep your tummy in, keep your pelvis steady. And we're just going to walk to the front of the mat so that your hands and directly underneath your shoulders. Knees are soft because we want to use the tummy muscles rather than the thigh muscles. Shoulders away from your ears, back of your head in line with your spine, into a plank. Now if you struggle with your wrists, you can come onto your knuckles, but you might prefer to lower yourself onto your elbows. I'm going to use a sponge, but you could use a towel, or you could roll your mat a little bit. And this is your full plank. But if this feels too much, you can just lower your thighs to the floor and lift your feet. So this position with your thighs down on the floor is better on your elbows. Being on your hands, your body's a little bit too diagonal. So it's better to either have thighs and elbows, feet and elbows, or feet and hands. You choose. But keep your knees soft if you're on your feet. Keep the tummy muscles tight. Try not to lock your elbows either. If you've had enough, just bring yourself down gently onto your knees, untuck your toes, and bring yourself into child pose. But I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. So if you're still in plank, I'd like to clasp my hands, but you can have your hands separate. Nice and strong through the shoulders. And if you want to do something while you're up here, just try tapping out and back in, keeping your pelvis still, changing legs, keep the breath flowing. So you want exhale, tap out, Inhale, bring it back. Pull the other way around, we'll do. Keep your shoulders still, keep your hips still, keep that breath flowing. Anytime you're ready to come down, just lower your knees. If you're not already on your knees, untuck your toes. And then, we're just going to bring ourselves down onto our fronts. If you feel like you want to stretch the back after the plank, just place your hands wide of your shoulders, elbows nice and relaxed. Shoulders away from your ears, tummy in, push up, walk your hands back into child pose here. You can also do a cat stretch coming onto all fours. A scoop of the pelvis, pulling the tummy in, chin to chest. And my favourite one is to do a combination of that and the child pose. So just take your bottom of your hips closer to your feet, keep your chin tucked in. Tummy tight, got my shoulders forward, and that's really stretching into your lower back. But I think we can be ready now. Just carefully lower yourself onto your front, keep your shoulders away from your ears. Ready to do your lower back work now. So, keeping the shoulders back, so we're using our mid back muscles to do that. 
We're going to use the glutes as well, but we're going to work the lower back by just keeping the hands on the floor, just slightly in front of your shoulders and slightly wide of your shoulders. You notice my hips, my pelvis is still on the floor. My shoulders are staying away from my ears and I'm not moving at the neck, so I'm not looking forwards, just keeping my head still, looking slightly down. Tummy muscles tight, just to protect my back. If this feels too much, don't come up as far. I am pushing into the hands, but not too much. It's not a press up, I don't want to come right up so my arms are straight. I'm just coming up slightly more than I would if my hands weren't on the floor. Let's just hold and just turn your head to the right. Back to centre, to the left, back to centre, and then down. So we'll do that one more time, keeping the shoulders back, just gently pushing into the hands, tummy in, turn to the left this time. Back to centre, breathe, and to the right, back to centre, and down. Just taking your arms a little further forwards, shoulders back, squeeze your, your right buttock, your right glute and use that squeeze, that clench, to initiate the leg lift of the right leg. Keep your shoulders relaxed and lower. And the same on the other side. So squeeze with the left glute and use it, use that clench to lift your leg. The leg doesn't come up very far. It's quite low and it's straight, but don't lock the knee. So keep the knee soft so you're not using your hamstring. You could easily bend the knee if you were asked to. So let's work with the breath. Breath in to prepare, exhale, lift. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, inhale, lower. So now we want to add a chest lift and the opposite arm. So I'm currently doing left leg, right arm and chest. Keeping the head still, looking at the floor. So exhale, lift, keep the shoulders relaxed. Inhale, lower, keep the tummy in. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. So the arm that's coming up, we're going to bring that into a salute, keeping the other hand on the floor. So it's still opposite arm to leg, but instead of just lifting the arm away from the floor, turn it into a salute. So exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. And then replace it on the floor. Exhale, lift, salute. Still using your bottom. Inhale, lower. This time, exhale, lift and hold. We're going to turn towards that saluting arm, turning the chest back to centre and lower, change side. So it's inhale, lift, exhale, turn from the waist, not the neck, inhale, centre, exhale, lower. If you feel that's enough, take a breather. Otherwise, just do a couple more, squeezing your bottom, rotating from the waist, not from the neck, back to centre and lower. So one last one if you want. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn, Inhale, centre, exhale, lower. Well done. Let me just take a breather here. You can bring your hands into what's called a diamond press. One hand on top of the other. Just rest your forehead on the top hand and just relax. Just focusing on your breath. Trying to breathe in through the nose nice and wide into the rib cage without hunching your shoulders. Just keep your shoulders away from your ears. And then the arms come wide. And like you did before, keep your elbows at 90 degrees, shoulders away from your ears, tummy tight, breath in, and as you exhale, just lift your pelvis, lift your hips away from the floor, keep your tummy tight, and then walk your hands back, and let's take a lovely stretch for the back here, because it's just had a good workout, so we need to give it a good stretch. So this is your child pose. You can then take a cat stretch, keeping the stomach muscles tight, coming onto all fours. Knees under your hips, hands, hands under your shoulders, roll the shoulders back, but then scoop your pelvis, let the shoulders come forwards and chin to chest, tummy in, stretching here, and stretching all through your back, the mid and upper back as well. But then, allow your hips to go closer to your heels, taking the weight out of your hands, and really feel that lovely lower back stretch. And then we're gonna keep the tummy tight and come up onto the knees, rolling the shoulders back, bringing the chin up. Because that's the final part of your spine. Okay, we're gonna do some work on our knees now. So, I feel as if I should have mentioned at the beginning, have a towel handy. If you don't have one, take a little break. And go and get more. But I've got sponges. These are just upholstery sponges, so um, they're not something that you can find everywhere. But a rolled up towel will do just as well. Or you could roll up your mat until you feel it's spongy enough for your knees. You may not need anything. I'm going to face this way so that you can see what's happening from the front. 
on the mat, just further away from me than my shoulder. At the same time, I'm going to take my other leg, my opposite leg, out to the side. Now, you could be up on your fingertips here, you could be on a flat hand, you may have a block handy if you feel your arm is too short, so you can lift it by doing that. But I'm happy to just put my hand flat or slightly upon my fingertips. You want your shoulders back, and I'm going to smooth my top hand. You may feel that you're slouching to this side. So we're just going to try and draw the weight up into the tummy. Nice and tight, not slouching into that hip. So keep the tummy in. And keep your body in alignment with the mat. So I'm thinking that I'm in a narrow corridor. That I've got a wall in front of me that I don't want to touch. And I've got a wall behind me. So hips, shoulders, head, head diagonal, chin lifted, tummy tight, and everything's in alignment. So I don't want a leg here or here. And this top hip is in line with my bottom hip, don't want to roll forwards, shoulders back, diagonal head, and we lift that top leg. You don't want too much weight in this hand, but you don't want too much weight in this thigh either. Try and draw up the body weight into your core. Soften the knee on the lifted leg. Now if this is enough already, that is absolutely fine. Just turn carefully and stretch here. But if you're happy, you can try this. Keep your pelvis still, just flex your foot and draw your leg in front. Not too far, and then point and bring it back in line with your body. So flex there, point there. The idea is nothing else moves, not your hips, so there's no sinking or rolling. The tummy muscles keep your pelvis still and you don't touch your shoulders. So it looks like you're in a straight line, like so, and nothing else moves. Just think, I'm just moving my leg keeping everything else still. Exhale for that movement, inhale to bring it back. When you're done, you just turn and stretch. So that's hard. Probably feel as if you may have got to breathe. So just take a bit of calm. And we're going to stay on the same side. We're going to actually lie down and repeat the move from a lying position. So whichever leg is at the top, keep that same leg at the top. You can use your sponges or your towel to rest here. Or you can put one between your head. Or you may not need one. Between your head and your arm, you may not need one. So another option is to put the sponge here under your hip if you feel that you need a bit of padding. Hips are stacked, one hip directly above the other. Knees soft, don't block your knees and try and stay in a straight line. You can use your mat as a guide. So don't curl around like a banana. You can soften the bottom leg, you can bend the bottom knee. Salute, lift the top leg, just to hip height, and you repeat the move. Flex, point. Flex as you breathe out, point as you breathe in. And you'll feel your shoulders tighten as you try and keep your balance. And you'll feel this top Hit wants to roll backwards to compensate for the fact that your legs are going forwards, but don't let it. Really grip the tummy muscles to keep your pelvis steady. Try and keep your shoulders relaxed. Exhale, boy. Inhale, low. How far forward can you go with that leg without rolling your hip back, without tensing your shoulders? Notice how your bottom leg tries to join you to help out your core. When you feel like you've had enough, just gently bring it down. Even allow your leg. Relax here, get that lovely stretch. You can even roll onto your back and place that leg, the one that was at the top, just place it here with the knee out to the side. In fact, I invite you to join me for this next exercise. We're going to actually take a stretch here. So, foot on your thigh, this is your leg that was on top. I'm going to take my arms above my head, but you can keep them by your side. And this lower leg, you can lift and hold here, and that will increase the stretch. Or you can keep that foot on the floor. But I want you to now scoop your pelvis, like we did when we were standing up. Pushing your pubic bone up to the ceiling, feeling your back flatten to the mat. And now lift your lower leg off. Relax your shoulders, and we're going to try and just roll up through the spine and roll back down. I'm using my tummy muscles. So clench the tummy muscles. It's a bit like rolling pastry up the spine and rolling back down. You may not come up very far. And doing it with your legs in this position is difficult. So if you find it too difficult, if you find your shoulders are joining in and tensing and you just can't get 
any movement here, or it's... You feel that the tummy muscles aren't in charge. Try bringing your legs into this position. You can straighten them or keep them bent and see if you can do it there. It's not a big movement unless you want it to be. It's very controlled. Through the tummy, not the thighs, not the shoulders. It's the tummy muscles clenching, pressing down. The legs should feel nice and light. So we exhale to roll up the spine. Inhale to roll back down. Just one more. So I'm sort of scooping the pelvis and pressing down into, through my tummy muscles, into the spine, as if I've got some patient that I'm trying to roll up the spine and then roll back down. And this time, take your feet slowly all the way to the floor. If that feels too much, if you feel your stomach muscles can't handle that, just do one foot and then the other. Or you can have your hands here for a bit of support. Breathe as you go, relax the shoulders. And when you land, you can just, just relax and take a breather. So we're going to do all of that on the other side. I'm going to go through it with a little less talk. You can take more time and just make sure that you do the same amount of time on each side. So to come up to sitting, you can either just roll and use your hands to get you up, or you can try and curl up. So to do that, I'm going to scoop the pelvis again, tummy tight, knees bent, maybe walk the feet a little further, arms above your head. Keep that scoop, keep the tummy muscles switched on, breath in, and as you breathe out, bring your arms in front and you roll up. If you get to this point and you think, I can't go any further, just put your hands on the floor and give yourself a little bit of a push, but try and use your tummy muscles. Coming up onto the knees, feel free to take a stretch. So I'm getting my sponges again, towel, you can roll the mat. Knees about hip width, tummy tight. And I'm just going to turn, rotate the chest at the same time, take your leg out and put your hand just further away than your shoulder. Make sure you don't sink into the shoulder or the hip. Hips are square, hips are stacked, one on top of the other, not one behind the other, or further forward. Tummy in, head down, shoulders back, shoulders are stacked as well. Salute and lift. So just hold it here and breathe. Keep your tummy in, make sure you're not a bit tense. Try to enjoy it. Don't lift the head too high, just below the hip. You feel you start pressing here. As you get better and stronger, it comes up into your core instead of going down into your thigh. Make sure you're not pressing into the shoulder. Exhale to bring it forwards. Inhale to bring it back. You might want to flat hand, you might want to block. So try to keep the pelvis still. Not until you hand on your hip. Just to check you're not rolling it backwards. Make sure the shoulders don't tense. Really use your stomach. If you feel yourself moving, I want 
to even up my body. So if you feel a decision you decide, maybe do a few extra ones. Or if you feel a decision you decide, maybe roll over and do the other side just three or four more times. I mean just three or four more repetitions of this exercise. So you're just trying to rebalance. And then just allow that leg to rest. So it's good to where you really excited. So then, we're going to roll onto our back and place the leg that's on top here, the knee out to the side. Now this is a stretch in itself, or you can lift the lower leg. Make sure you've got your tummy muscles switched on, that increases the stretch. But then we're going to turn it into an exercise. So I'm going to scoop the pelvis, keep the shoulders relaxed, and up my arms there, by all means have them there. Lift that lower leg, keep the tummy muscles switched on, rolling up the spine, breath in, and as you exhale, roll that down. So think about the breathing on this side a little more, breath in. As you exhale, roll up, breathe in and hold. As you exhale, roll back down. So it may not be a big move. You're getting the advantage of stretching around your outer thigh and your glutes as you do it. Make sure the shoulders don't tense. You tend to tense the shoulders when something's hard. Try and keep all the tension in the tummy. And make sure your feet aren't all tense as well. You don't want to get cramped. If you find that's too much, just go to this one. So just, you might want to straighten your legs a little. That helps you go a bit further. As long as the tummy muscles are doing the job, not the thighs, don't let the shoulders join in. And when you've done a few, just slowly bring your feet to the floor. One foot at a time is fine. If you want to try both, the more you straighten them, the harder it is. Keep that back flat to the mat, keep the abs switched on, relax the shoulders. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Don't let the thighs join in. And when you get there, you can then just relax. And we'll go into the shoulder bridge, which I think is everybody's, or one of everybody's favourites. Positioning the feet, the heels are under the knees, the knees and feet are hip width, hands by your side or above your head, you choose. But keep the shoulders back and down. You're going to scoop the pelvis, tummy in, roll up through the spine. When you get to the top, you can squeeze your bottom, pull your tummy in, push your hips up so you feel really solid and strong. Breath in, check the shoulders down with the hunch. As you exhale, roll down one vertebra at a time. So really take care as you're coming down. Make sure that you allow the pelvis to move freely through its range of motion. So when you finish, you've got that natural gap where the curve is, and then you re-scoop and roll up, pulling the tummy vertebra by vertebra. At the top here, you can either just hold Check you use your bottom, push your hips up, feel the stretch, tummy in, breath in and roll back down, vertebra by vertebra. Or you can do something at the top. So when we get to the top next time, you can either come straight back down or try this. As long as you're feeling okay and strong, lift your right heel, turn the knee out to the side, keeping your hips facing the ceiling. Don't let your hips turn. Bring it back to centre, replace the heel. If you're ready to come down, that's fine, but if you can do the other side while you're here. So keep the hips facing the front, back to centre, replace the heel, roll back down. So if you only did one side, you're going to have to come up again. If you need to just stretch out before you do. If you feel the backs of your legs working too hard, make sure you've got your heels under your knees, not too far away. Everything hip width, and then we roll up. If you already did two sides, you could do both sides again. But I'm just going to do the left this time. Actually, I'll do the right as well, as I did do both. But just make sure that you do both sides, either separately or together, either once or twice. Breath in, and as you breathe out, roll back down. Vertebra by vertebra. Hug the knees in to stretch your back and around your bottom. Straight the legs a little bit, flex the feet to stretch the hamstrings. Let's take a hamstring 
stretch of the right leg. So I'm just holding my leg in the air, not behind the knee because that will make it bend, just either above or below, flex the foot, push the heel up, feel the stretch, bring it down, change sides. So the other knee is bent, gently pull it in, breathe, keep your shoulders relaxed. Develop that hamstring stretch. So, bringing your right knee into your chest. But again, just feel the pelvis, just, just allow it to do a little scoop so your back flattens out and the tummy muscles pull them in. And try and keep your pelvis in that position. Keep it anchored there with your tummy muscles. Extend the leg up, bend it, bring it back down, change legs. So, we hold the knee in, extend, you can flex the foot. Bend it back down, bring it in. So now we're not going to miss out the bend. So we bend it when we go back down, but we sort of pretty much straighten it straight away. So we bend it a little, but then it goes up. Smoothing the move out, keeping the shoulders relaxed. Bend it back down. And the important thing is that I'm keeping my tummy in and I'm keeping my back as flat to the mat as I can and keeping my pelvis still. Okay, the other leg. So while your right leg's in the air, the left leg extends. And now, you're just gonna keep the leg straight. If that feels too difficult, you can bend them a little bit like this and not take them very low. If you wanna make it harder, the leg that's not coming in, that can go parallel to the floor or it might bend and not go quite so close. Now, can you lift the upper body while this is going on? So you can bend, don't worry if you want to bend and not go as close to the floor, or keep the legs. And we're starting now to go behind the legs. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping your tummy muscles tight. Try to keep your back flat to the mat. If you find that it's gone to your neck, that's fine. What you do, bring your feet to the floor, one at a time or both together. Put your hands behind your head, Stay here. Just see if you can let your neck relax and your head relax, shoulders relax, but keep these tummy muscles switched on. So it's all relaxed up here, but I'm switched on all around here. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, just keep your head heavy in your hands. Lower yourself down slowly. So you're not using your neck muscles. And then just take a breather. So we're going to develop that. The scoop and the lift that people find goes to their neck quite quickly. Keeping your legs in a semi bent position, everything hit with the pelvic scoop. Arms by your side, breath in, and as you breathe out, we lift. So remember your pelvic scoop, your back flaps them out the tummy, and just lift here, and I've lifted my arms. Roll the shoulders around so you're not tensing them. Now, I'm just gonna move my arms out of the way. I just want you to try and keep that pelvic scoop, but also bring your diaphragm closer to your pelvis. So sh we're not just lifting, we're shortening the distance. Shoulders back and down. Okay, now pull the arms, we're into the 100. The idea is that your body stays still, so you don't go like this, but you just move your arms. Let's do, breathe in for four pumps, breathe out for four pumps. So the faster you pump, the more pumps you can do for every breath. We aim for five, but that's actually quite fast, and then your body starts to move around. So I'm just gonna go with four, or maybe even three. When you feel like it's going to your neck, hands behind your head like we did before, try and keep the abs switched on, relax, let the head feel heavy, keep the tummy muscles switched on, take a breath in, and as you exhale, slowly lower. And just take a breather. Let's try one more. So, let's try another one. So we're just going to scoop the pelvis, pulling in the tummy. This time you've got a choice. You can either keep your feet where they are, or a little bit harder, lift the heels, walk the toes a little closer, or harder still, lift the toes, and stay in tabletop. If this feels too hard though, you can bring your knees in a bit. So we're keeping the back flat to the mat, breath in. As you exhale, you lift. But remember, we try and shorten the distance. Shoulders relaxed and start to pump. So I'll go for five. Inhale, 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 inhale. Exhale, 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 exhale. So it's five counts. And it's 
called the hundred, could you do that? Ten times. Yes. But you may well feel that if, when you get to twenty, or even ten, or forty, your shoulders start tensing, your neck starts aching, so it's time to stop. Put your hands behind your head, relax, head feels heavy, keep the abs switched on. Bring your feet to the floor, either together or one at a time. Hold, breath in, and as you breathe out, let your head feel heavy, so that you're not using your neck muscles as you come down. If you manage to 100, fantastic. If you lost count, that's fine. Really doesn't matter. Allow yourself to just stretch. Let your knees and toes turn outwards. Bring your chin towards your chest without lifting your head so that you're just stretching the back of your neck. It does stop you breathing a bit though, so don't hold that chin down for very long. Just lift your chin up again so that you can breathe. So we're going to do the final exercise now, and that's going to take us into the stretches. So if you take your arms out wide, palms down, and I'm going to step the feet in, bring the knees together, a little bit of a pelvic scoop, so it helps me switch on my abs. And I'm just going to lift the toes off the floor, keeping the knees bent and trying to keep my thighs relaxed. So I'm going to allow the knees to just make a kind of rainbow shape, just an arc, allowing them to go side to side, and I'm letting the hips follow. I want you to think of your body in two parts. We're letting the lower part of the body rotate side to side, but not the upper part. So I'm trying to keep my shoulders still and my arms still. If you want to make this harder, bring your arms closer to your body or even harder still across your chest. Try and keep your shoulder blades on the mat. You'll notice your thigh muscles might want to join in. Keep them relaxed. This is all about the core. The trunk of the body is where you get the twist. So the hips follow the legs. The feet relax, don't tense your feet, don't get cramp. And when you get to one side, take a breath in, and then as you exhale, use your tummy muscles, not your thighs, to bring yourself back to centre, across the other side, breathe in. Exhale, change sides. So try not to press into your arms too much. And keep the thighs out of the equation. Relax the feet. If it's too difficult, you can place your toes on the floor or your feet on the floor. But again, really focus on keeping those shoulder blades on the mat. Relax them as well, don't tense your shoulders. Next time you go to the left, we're going to bring the knees very, very slowly all the way to the floor and allow the feet to follow. And if you haven't already, take your arms out wide. And now slowly start to relax. Relax your feet, your shoulders, your back, your tummy. Just stay there. You can cross your right leg over if you like. And turn your head to the right. Close your eyes. And just relax. We'll take three breaths. And each exhale, just relax a little more deeply. So you want to think about relaxing your shoulders. And around your waist and your lower back, your feet, your hands. Relax into your breath. And then we'll bring the head back to centre. And bring that top leg back. Using the tummy muscles, so take a breath in. Switch on the tummy. And as you breathe out, lift up. And control it slowly across to the other side, to the right. So control it. While you're doing this, I'm just going to place the music. And just keep those shoulders on the floor, cross the top leg over, as long as that feels okay. And turn your head to the left, away from the legs. Just relax, three breaths, through the nose. Each time you exhale, just sink a little more deeply into that relaxation. Check your feet, shoulders. Full exhale. Back to centre, hook the knees in. So if you take your arms on the back of your legs, you can 
squeeze you a bit closer to your shoulders, get more of a curve in the spine. Some of you might be able to just push yourself right over, open down the knees, and get into that really good alien shape. And then bring your legs back, knees into your chest, and hands on your shins. We're going to roll up to sitting, but we're going to try not to use too much momentum, not too much swing. So tummy tight, shoulders relax, breath in, get yourself ready a little bit. As you exhale, roll up and try and hold the balance here. And then keeping your tummy in, just extend your legs. Keep your hands here for support. Raise your arms, sit tall, soft knees, breath in. As you breathe out, forwards, curve the spine. Reach for your ankles, slide the elbows back to your hips, tummy in, and we roll up. The chin comes last. Now we're going to take your feet round the back. Coming onto all fours. Let's remove these sponges. And coming onto two knees, and I'm going to invite you to put your weaker leg in front. So mine's my left leg. Make sure your knees are hip width. Place your weaker leg in front, the one that you're not used to standing upon. Tuck your toes under the back. We're going to try and keep the pelvis steady and we're just going to try and lift forwards and up onto that weaker leg. If you struggle with that, you can use your hands and step in and roll up or you might be able to just put your hands here and still be able to come up onto that weaker leg. Once you get to the top, just spend a few seconds just realising where you are. Position to be in with. Make sure your pelvis is in neutral. Sip up the tummy. Just get in touch with the pelvic floor, just find it, and then maybe hold it just a little bit up, but keep those abs in, roll the shoulders back into position, back and down, make sure you're standing upright, not leaning backwards or forwards, and keep your knees soft. We're going to take a breath in, 